Welcome back, I'm Derek, and today we're going to cover command pipelines in our Fat Controller CQRS Diet series. So today I'm going to be covering the command pipeline and what it would be used for. If we take a look at the add to cart handler that we created here, there's actually kind of one action, one piece of behavior that really doesn't belong here and you may have noticed it which is the this logger and creating that protect that log with these i logger here it'd be nice if we could get that out of this handler and move it somewhere separate and so one of the ways we can do this is with a pipeline and the pipeline being having pre and post handlers that we can execute uh, after this main handler has actually been been invoked so what we would like to do is remove this out into its own function its own class and have it invoked after the add to cart handle uh, method is called. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to start by creating a new file here that's going to contain our new interface for our post request handler and then our actual pipeline implementation. Calls pipeline. And I'm going to add a new interface which is basically going to be, <clears throat> like I said, for what we're going to be using as we implement our post request handler. So I'm just going to post a little snippet and I'll explain what it actually is here. So this can be an interface, our post request handler. It's going to have two type parameters, the request and the response. And the request will be a cancelable uh, async request, which also has a response. So this is pretty familiar in terms of what a, a normal request handler looks like. We're just defining a new interface for what our post request handlers are going to look like. So now for implementing our pipeline, uh, what we can do is we're going to take a request and it's going to have a response. And let's actually create the constructor here and some of the things this is going to take. So really what this is, is, is a decorator. We're going to have our actual request handler that we want to execute plus the uh, a list, a collection of post handlers that we're going to invoke after we actually call the the other handler, the main handler. So what I'm going to take here is a um, a i cancelable async request handler, which its type parameters here are the request as well as the response, and we're going to call this the inner request. And then I'm going to have that new interface, uh, an array of that new iPost request handler. And this is also going to be the request and the response. And this could be an array. We'll call this post handlers. So now what we can do is assign these to some private members. And then let's make a handle method. That's going to take our message, incoming message, and our cancellation token. going to do is now we're actually going to invoke the main handler so we're going to just basically be passing it off you can think of this really as this this pipeline class as a, a wrapper as a decorator around our original message we can pass in our token and then we're just going to iterate through our Post handlers, and then we'll invoke those. Doing the same thing, just passing the message, and now we can pass it the response, and then return our response at the end. And one little issue here. There we go. So this is our wrapper. This is our decorator, if you will, for our pipeline, where we're basically taking our main request handler. And then we're going to be taking a list of post handlers. 
And then on this handle method, we're going to be calling the main handler and then invoking the handle method on all the post handlers. So it's pretty straightforward. So the next question is, how do we get Mediator to create this pipeline, an instance of this pipeline class, and use it instead of invoking directly our request handlers? Well, we can do this by using a DI container that supports decorators, which is essentially what this pipeline is. It's a decorator, it's a wrapper. So I'm going to be using structure map, which has the support. So what I'm going to do is jump over to the project JSON file. I'm going to be adding a dependency, uh, a couple of them actually, for structure map. I'm going to paste this in. So I'm going to be using structure map and then the structure map Microsoft dependency injection, which is the package for ASP.NET uh, Core. So we can see that NuGet's restoring, and then that's finished. So we're, we should be good to go now to configure this in ASP.NET Core. So let's look at the startup class now. And what I can do to configure structure map is what we need to do is in the configure services method is where we need to configure structure map and then actually return it. Um, so instead of void, what we're actually going to be returning here now is an iService provider. So we can get rid of the void and say we're turning an iService provider. And at the very end of this method, I'm going to paste in a little bit of a snippet here which is me configuring a uh, structure map with mediator for mediator. So this is it. So we're creating a new structure map container and we're doing some scanning which basically is stating which is at the default conventions but this is the line here where some of the magic happens which is we're getting all the implementations of the iPost request handler and then here's the decoration is we're saying for every one of the cancelable async request handler which uh, for example our add to cart uses instead of returning that we're actually going to decorate it with our pipeline our new pipeline uh, class that we created there so we're getting a new instance of that and then basically just we're returning the iService provider <clears throat> that structure map uh, that one package for ASP.NET Core that we that we got so this is pretty much all we need here to now be invoking our pipeline instead of directly the, the main request handler. So let's give this a spin. I'll add some breakpoints and we can see how it's working. So let's add a breakpoint to the request handler so we can actually see that this is getting called. Start debugging. Alright, now that's loaded, we can go add an album to our cart, which then should hit the breakpoint in our pipeline. Perfect. So now we can see that the pipeline's getting called, and then we're going to call the main handler. So I can just continue, and everything's working correctly. So now that we're back into our Add to Cart in Visual Studio, the logging is ultimately the whole purpose of this. So we're going to remove this into its own new post request handler. So let's go ahead and create that handler. And this has two type parameters, which are our add to cart and unit. And go implement this. So we need to inject our logger, and then we can remove it from our actual other handler. So let's create our constructor. And let's remove it from here. Let's add it over here. this out of here from here as well and then this line now we can move to our handle method so we're gonna call this actually let's call this add to cart and then the album ID is actually in our request so that's it let's run this again and we should be able to see that the handle method will get invoked. All right, so now it's loaded. We can go back to adding something to our shopping cart. And now, like it did last time, the pipeline uh, is being invoked. And now we can see in the post handlers that we actually have our, our logger. So if we call, if we just continue through this, 
Now we're debugging and we're hitting the break in our logger and it's getting called as expected after our main handle method was called. And everything's working. So that's it. You can see how the pipeline, a command pipeline using decorators is very useful for running post handlers, for logging, or any other tasks that responsibilities that you don't feel are necessary within the directly within your main handler. You could see how you could create pre-handlers for doing other things such as validating the incoming request, um, doing some authorization, etc. It's just an easy way to separate responsibilities into separate classes. Hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a like and subscribe for more .NET related videos. Thanks.